All right, everyone. I am so excited. I really am. I'm so pumped for this morning. Hello, hello, my name is Voodoo Val, and I'm going to be your instructor this morning for the Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge. And today's challenge is going to be pretty, pretty cool. Um, it's, it's something that I've actually done before, but I'm going to do it in a completely different way. We're going to jump into some animation this morning. Um, and those of you who have watched some of my challenges previously, you will probably remember me doing like frame by frame animation with the Photoshop timeline. Today, we're actually going to be animating in the video timeline and we're going to be like animating with keyframes and all kinds of stuff for like a perfect, smooth, awesome uh, animation. And I think it's going to be really, really cool. So the first thing I'd like to do before we kind of dive into all the stuff we have planned is I want to show you how you can uh, kind of join me, get involved in everything that I am doing for this challenge where you can download all of the resources and all that good stuff. So I'm going to pop over here. This is the creative challenge landing page, behance.net slash challenge slash Photoshop. You will know you are in the right place if you see April 26th through May 21st. If you show up to this page and you see a different date here, it means you're watching this video, which is from the past, and you are in my future. Uh, so all you have to do is scroll down to the bottom of the page here. You'll be able to um, pick out the April through May uh, date down here somewhere, and you will still have access to watch all of the videos and to hit this get started button and get all of the resources and starter files you need. Um, I, let me see, we've done a lot of different challenges so far. We've messed with sh uh, shapes and gradients, perspective transform, glow effects, custom textures, floral backdrops, placing patterns, vintage paintings, and today, it's going to be an animated portrait. So we're going to be using the same assets that we used yesterday, and I'm going to show you folks how to create a little scene, and we are going to animate a, a kind of a haunted portrait, like a, a portrait of um, a woman, and her eyes are going to follow you around as you walk through the halls of the home, okay? So all you have to do in order to join me is to hit this Get Started button. You can always come back to this page and hit the Watch Video button, which will bring you right back here to check out the recorded VOD. Um, and you can also join the Discord. We'll put a link to the Discord into the chat. If you go to bit.ly slash PS Discord, you will be able to share all of um, your challenge entries, um, get a little bit of feedback, and uh, see what everyone else in the community is making. So I'm really excited about this. I'm going to dive into it because I've had a habit, I think, all this week of taking a really long time to finish my challenges until I'm down to the wire. So I'm going to jump into it. Um, this is the challenge starter file that, um, that you will receive once you hit that get started button. It says animate a portrait subject's eyes, making them move back and forth using keyframes and the timeline. And then I also added to open the timeline panel, go to window timeline, create video timeline. Um, so that is, uh, the, the, the way that you would access all of those settings and kind of scoot in here. Okay. Um, so. We have uh, an image of a woman that you can use, an image of a picture frame, and then I've also got this texture, this um, this pattern texture that I've created throughout these challenges for you folks to use. Um, and I'm going to show you how I created a, a scene, okay? Um, so this is the rectangular mirror um, that I have for you. This is what this looks like. Let me open this up. So you folks may have used this image yesterday. This is another image that was included in yesterday's challenge. Um, this is actually, I, th I just thought this was a really cool um, image because it's something that's very easy. If you just drag, you know, your marquee tool here, you could come in and, and mask this out, you know? So if I throw that there and I hit mask, um, actually let me right click, select inverse and then mask. I can mask that out and I can start building a scene behind it so that it looks like, you know, I have my own kind of stuff in this, um, in this picture frame. Um, and I also have this woman, um, who's just absolutely gorgeous, uh, beyond belief. Um, and so we're going to put her into this, um, into this scene. Now, one of the things that I wanted to do because I wanted to make, I chose this image, uh, because I thought that, um, 
I could do some editing and make like the um, flowers on her head kind of match uh, the gilt frame um, of this. And I realize um, now that I believe that this this image has like some religious connotations. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that this is like a portrayal of um, Mary. Um, but I still, I really thought that she was absolutely beautiful, um, and I figured that this week we are celebrating a great many things, um, in, uh, Hispanic culture and Mexican history, and so why not? Because I found this, um, this is, uh, done by, um, a Hispanic, uh, photographer, um, and there was a lot of really beautiful images on his profile on Unsplash that seemed to be, um, just kind of, like, showcasing a lot of beauty of culture from that part of the world and so I just wanted to use it um mesmerizing image I know this is just uh, I can't even I can't even handle it um so beautiful like her eyes look look look, look at that look at that <laughs> so beautiful um so we're gonna use this image um and what i did was i cut her out and masked it okay um and i added it into um, my frame and one of the things that i did in order to kind of spice this image up is i actually opened it in lightroom i opened my image in lightroom um i tweaked the temperature over here i flipped back and forth between orange and red and i i tweaked the temp um, and the tint to kind of give this more of a golden flare um, and then what you can do after you edit a photo in Lightroom is you can come up to file and you can actually say edit in Photoshop so when you go to edit in Photoshop it literally just opens it boom right there and all I did was grab my marquee tool um, I drug a box out around that um, I'm going to subtract just a little bit from there. I right clicked, select inverse, added a mask like I showed you earlier, um, and then what I did was I cropped it. So if you hit C on your keyboard, your cropping tool should come out, um, and I just cropped, I just pulled this down and made myself a nice little image like so. Um, and then now that I have like this, you know, this really beautiful frame that's just front and center right there for my project is um, I wanted to mask out um, this woman. Um, now I'm going to go over briefly how I masked her out. I am going to Martha Stewart you folks so that we don't have to spend a ton of time sort of figuring out how to um, mask on on stream because I do want to get to the animation portion of this. Uh, but I do also want to make sure I leave you with the tools necessary to do exactly what I'm doing. So um, there's a lot of ways that you can um, select uh, a subject out of a canvas and we've gone over actually a lot of them um, during these challenges but when I started to try and mask her uh, out of this painting or this this uh, photograph I noticed that drastic measures were called for because um, she had a lot of like wispy hair here that I kind of wanted to save in a way um, and when you look really closely at the edges of these flowers that are on her head um it was it was difficult because you have all these lines um so many even though this is a background over here and like these are the leaves the the difference between the two colors is they're so similar that um a lot of things like the object selection tool here it has difficulty selecting especially right in here and right around these edges um, and right there it has difficulty discerning what is what and what should be selected so that didn't work um, properly for me um, I tried the quick selection tool um, and this actually wasn't so bad but I got a lot as I started to get up into the edges here I got a lot of artifacts um, kind of going around there and then you can hold um, alt and kind of come in and start subtracting but it really wasn't as accurate as I wanted it to be so I didn't use that um, if you come up to so, uh, select you can kind of look here and see we have like color range we have focused area we have subject we have sky um, and all that stuff but what I wanted to do is select and mask and the reason why is because I could come in here and 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 use these tools to really um, kind of get a selection that is softer around certain places um, and sharper around other places so what I did was I made sure I have this um, 
selection tool um, selected up here. Um, I made sure to kind of turn the size of my brush down and very lightly I just started brushing across and you can see how Photoshop starts to kind of guess what it thinks you're trying to select on its own and if I make my brush really small, you can see it's starting to bring a lot of this in. Let me see if I can do like that to give you guys a better idea. You can see that I've really started to um, kind of bring this into focus, these pieces that need to be selected. Um, and it's still it's still a little soft in some places, but the thing is, this is this was accurate enough for me to be satisfied with certain places, especially with parts of the hair. Um, if I was, you know, brushing really softly, um, and I was able to come in here, um, and clean it up, uh, to, um, my own satisfaction, um, and then, uh, I, what I did was I just hit okay, and then I came back and cleaned up the edges with, um, a polygonal lasso or, uh, the regular lasso tool. Um, and then I masked her. So once you have, you know, your selection, for example, um, if... This is, this is a horrible selection, but just bear with me. Um, <laughs> this is just an example because I am going to pull up the, the version that I masked already. So um, if I, you know, had her selected, then I could hit mask and then she would be just by herself on the canvas and, you know, not with any of the background. Um, but let me real quick, um, I am going to open um, and show you what I actually created. So, and then we're gonna, then we're gonna animate her. Um, let me go to file, open. Um, actually, I wanna go to my thing here where I have all of my stuff created for my Magic Mansion DCC right here. And I wanna go, I believe, to tests. So I can see, yeah, here we go. So this is what it ended up looking like, okay? Um, I have her in here, nice and cut out. I have my frame around her. Um, I did change the color of my texture, which you guys actually have um, in the starter file right here. You know, I just did control U and opened the human saturation and I, I changed the color up to, to be, um, a little more golden um, and then what I did and I'm gonna hide some things real quick so that you folks can see something is I masked out her eyes okay um, so I have my you know my original piece right here um, and I also have an untouched photograph that's still in here just in case I want to come back and do something else but I masked out her eyes and if you want to start like picking and choosing what you're gonna mask on the mask all you have to do is make sure you have that mask that layers mask selected and you can paint with white or black in order to add or subtract things so I masked out her eyes and then with a dark like gray color I put a little box behind you know so this layer is behind the picture of her um, so that I have like a, oops, I want to kind of make this, there we go. Um, so that I have like a, not really an eye color, but you know, so that I have something back behind there because we're gonna make her eyes move today, right? Um, quick tip when it comes to like animating something like this or even just designing or illustrating something like this, um, a lot of people always go for a stark white color when it comes to choosing a color for the whites of eyeballs and I promise you the whites of eyeballs are usually slightly gray, slightly blue, or slightly yellow. They're not actually like white white most of the time um, and if they are they don't usually appear that way um, in a photograph unless the photograph has been um, color graded, right? Yes, I removed the eyes. Fairy's like, what? Um, but but wait, there's more. <laughs> um, okay, so we have our we have our beautiful scene, which I think looks super cool. We have our eyeless woman. Um, and what I did was, I'm gonna show you on this, oops, on this version of our um of our image is I came in and I duplicated one of her eyes. So I grabbed my marquee tool, my elliptical marquee tool, and I zoomed into her eye, 
and I drew out a circle holding shift to constrain proportions and then I hold while I'm holding shift I hold the space bar so that I can move this around and I centered this around on um, her eyeball like that and then hit control J to duplicate it I'll hide that image so I can just look at that eyeball underneath and what I did was I made a new layer with control shift in made that layer a clipping mask um, to the eyeball I just cut out um, and then I kind of zoomed in just to make sure I didn't need to paint stuff because depending on how you make the selection you might have had part of her eyelashes in that or or whatever so I just you know maybe I'll take my brush and maybe I need to add some black here so I'll just like color in some black at the bottom kind of give it some more black around the edges and all that stuff and then I just converted that to a smart object so I had an eyeball okay I had like a little eyeball and then what I did was I held them over here I, I believe I made it actually a little bit bigger too I just like kind of made her eyeball larger and then I duplicated it with uh, control J um, command J if you were on a Mac um, and then I positioned it, and then I had a layer that had her eyes on it okay and I really liked that other eye because it had that you know that stark green uh, I'm just gonna group these real quick and hide them because I do have um, a layer so I made myself eyes and then I made sure to put those eyes on a layer behind the face that I masked her eyes out of so now she those those eyes are in between that gray color and her face. So if I want to, I could do this. So I'm gonna say Control T or Command T if you're using a Mac. Um, I am going to do Control H, which will remove, it actually removes all of the guidelines and things that I'm looking at uh, while I'm working, but it is still being free transformed. Um, and then I'm gonna hold Control and I'm gonna, oops, let me, kind of moved. Uh, the wrong way there okay um, and then I can check that out okay so basically I've got this stationary eyeball layer um, that is like she's like oh oh my god I can't believe you guys I can't believe you chat she's rolling her eyes at you um, uh, so we have this stationary eyeball layer um, and what I'm going to do is animate it and I'm gonna animate it very smoothly um, so how do we do that? Well, like I said in the starter file, you can go up to window um, and go to timeline. Um, and I have, um, usually when you pull up your timeline, it will say something like, um, uh, do you want to do a frame animation or a video animation? I've, you know, I've used this file before, so it's set to video animation already. Um, but make sure that you click from that drop down menu that you want to start a video animation. Um, and this is what you're going to get. Okay. This is, this is what you're going to get. This is the, um, timeline view, um, it, that you can use to animate in Photoshop. And as you can see, I have, um, a bunch of, uh, layers in here um, in my timeline that all um, resemble and and basically are the layers that I have in my layers panel over here um, and I am going to I'm gonna see if I can't remove a lot of these keyframes because we are gonna do something fancy we're gonna be fancy um, okay so now you notice over here on this left hand side we have like little carrots let me um, we are not using the other um, side with the regular layers right now so I'm actually gonna bump myself over um, to this side for now even though I'm co covering my layers because we're actually looking at the layers over on this side of the screen right now um, so um, all of these um, are basically here at, in place of my layers for my layers panel um, and all of these also have a little carrot menu here on the side um, that you can click and open to view any settings um, and things that you would like effects you would like to add. We're going to stick to the eyes here and we're going to stick to the transform effects that we're going to give it, okay? So you can see I have my little scrubby right here that shows me where I'm at in my video. I'm gonna leave that right at the beginning, okay? I'm going to select um, up here uh, in my layers panel, I'm gonna select my eyes, control T, I'm gonna hold control or um, 
uh, yeah, control so that I can move freely. And I'm gonna position her eyes, make sure they're in the corners of her eyes over here, okay? Hit enter. And then I'm gonna click this little stopwatch on transform. And you can see that added a small keyframe to my timeline. Now what I'm gonna do is scrub forward just a little bit come over here to my eyes, control T, and I'm gonna move them over here so it looks like she looks to this corner, okay? And then I'm gonna hit enter, and it adds another keyframe for me. So basically what it's telling Photoshop is from here to here, I want you to move these eyes from position one at this keyframe to position two at this keyframe, okay? Um, now let's do it again. So control T to free transform. Let's move her eyes up, okay? Let's kind of let's kind of bump them up so she's she's looking up right there, you know. Enter. Oops. You know what? Actually, I need to move my scrubby. There. We'll do it like right about there. Um, then I will free transform. Kind of bump that up there. I think that looks pretty good. Enter. Okay, and it added my third keyframe right there. And then I'm gonna scrub to the very end of our video here. Um, and I am going to grab my eyes again, control T, and I'm gonna move them back down to the corners of her eye, okay? Like so. All right, so now we have these four keyframes. I'm gonna scrub to the very end here. Um, I'm gonna open the the this little gear here make sure it's on 100 re percent resolution and i'm gonna i've got looping playback selected another thing you can do is come to this hamburger menu um, and go to set timeline frame rate and you can actually select from different frame rates here if you if you if you want to i'm gonna leave mine at 30 because that's okay for me and i'm gonna hit play so let's zoom out just a little bit so we can see her face here right and let's hit play ah uh and it's a little, it's a little choppy because it is like working, kind of like you would work in um, in uh, Premiere or After Effects. It needs, you can see it kind of this this blue bar up here, you know. Um, and I guess I I I've got like kind of a longer. Let me bump this down here. I need to make sure that this is only as long as I want it to be. So let's do that again. Um, what I did there was I, I, I shortened the length of my video. So that little cap was over there, which meant that my video was continuing on and I just brought it back to the very, very end. So now you can see I have this video where she she's looking around, okay? She's, she's, she's looking um, to the right, she's looking to the left or up and then looking back to the left. Um, which is pretty nifty. Now, how do I, what do I do with this now? Um, well, I'm, I'm here to tell you folks, you can actually export an MP4, an MP4 from Photoshop. I, I swear, it's, I'm not lying. Um, so you can, you can actually come over here. Um, let me, yeah, right here from this hamburger menu and say render video. It should be like right there, render video. Okay, and then this little thing comes up. Check this out. So I have port, you know, I'm calling it Portrait MP4. You can change the format to a DPX or a QuickTime if you want. You can change the quality. You can go through the document size. You can do all of this stuff. Um, select a folder. All this, it's like she's watching a tennis match. Um, and then you can hit render. I'm not gonna hit render now because I don't want my computer to be rendering while I am streaming. But again, I'm gonna Martha Stewart you and I am going to pull up a video that I rendered yesterday so that you folks can see what I made. So this is my final portrait, okay? And this is an MP4. It's a little looping MP4. I don't know if you can see it because it's probably small, but she is. She's looking around. We've got our 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 painting with our eyes kind of magically moving around and all that good stuff. So I I just I just I just edited a video, an MP4. I made, I didn't just edit an MP4 in Photoshop. I made an MP4 video file from scratch in Photoshop and exported it rendered it out like who knew who who knew right who knew 
I wonder if you can have a top layer set to screen or color dodge or maybe a mask level adjustment to create a lighting effect that affects the eyes as it moves in a realistic way. Absolutely, Sam, you can. I just don't have the time to show that to you today. Um, but I really do have to take off because we are coming to a close here. I've only got um, like 30 seconds left. Um, so it is time for me to take off, but I hope that you folks enjoyed this challenge. This is like my favorite challenge so far. I had so much fun doing this and I can't wait to see what you folks create. Um, I'm, I'm loving that I'm seeing people in chat saying they're gonna try it. This is gonna be rad. Um, so uh, yeah, thank you all for, for joining us. Please stick, uh, uh, stick around after this stream because there's gonna be tons of other wonderful artists and designers coming up after me. Um, and I will see you folks tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. for cosplay day. Cosplay day. Um, I don't know why I sound like the crimson chin, uh, but if you'd like to do cosplay day for tomorrow's final challenge with me, please dress up and take a picture and put it in the discord because I'm going to be wearing the, the largest dress I own. I'm going to be lady of the manor tomorrow. Um, so much love all happy designing and I will see you tomorrow in a big gigantic dress. Okay. <laughs>